Welcome back, Mountaintop, and our e-church and family friends around the world. So glad again you took time out on your Wednesday to be with us. I pray that you would help me spread the gospel through you and your medium, medium of devices, through the social media and devices. So please take a moment and text someone, inbox someone, and share this gospel with them so we can get the message out to, to the known world. This is our new normal, and it's becoming more normal, our abnormal. Let's pray tonight as we get started into this lesson. <clears throat> Father, we bless you and we thank you for your grace. You allowed us to come tonight to share your word again with your people. I pray that you would anoint the vessel of clay, speak life through us, to us, to we, your people. Save, heal, strengthen, and deliver. We pray for those that are bereaved at this time, that pray, God, you would be the God of comfort, be strength for them, and help in the time of their grief. Those that are sick among us, we pray for healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, God bless you, beloved. I thank you for tracking with us and staying with us. We've been navigating through this book of Hosea, <clears throat> good Sunday school lesson book, but also, I think, practical and uh, gives our attention to this now moment that we are in to experience <clears throat> the love of God that's so needed in a world that's filled with hate and violence and, and, um, and mayhem and anarchy. We need to come back to the mercy and find the love of God and his grace that we need in this hour. He said if we need this grace, <clears throat> excuse me, in this hour, he would give it to us and find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. I think the last time or somewhere we left off in the second chapter of the book of Hosea and verse 15, we went through a few things about the beauty of this wonders in the wilderness just to refresh and bring us back to a little bit of thought to uh, our lesson as we seen the Lord luring or wooing his bride into the wilderness, she had gone astray. She had gone out to play the harlot, and we understood that this could be practical as well as idolatry, which was Israel's thing against the Lord, <clears throat> using this woman, Gomar, to reveal Israel, Hosea being God's mess man or his prophet, to marry and to unite with her, showing God's love to come back and unite with us. Oh, the degrees of God's love, what he would go to to bring us back to him and deliver us in this wilderness place. He gives this woman in the second chapter of the book of Hosea, gives her a song to sing about the days of her youth when she was in the days of her excitement and when she had her strength and when God brought them up out of Egypt. He said, I want you to remember those and as you reflect upon those, get the song back in your heart again and begin to sing. And he goes on, I want you to see this scripture in Psalm 66 in verse 12. He says, and let people, you let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out uh, to a place of abundance. Here is God dealing with his people Israel as he takes us through the wilderness experiences of our lives and brings us out to a place of abundance, uh, a, a place of running over wealth, uh, a place of, of, of supernatural, uh, uh, um, saturated blessings. Uh, that's what he's doing for the church in this hour. He's bringing them to the place of, of a supernatural blessings. I was going to illustrate for you, um, if you could think in your mind, a towel or a rag and how if you put it in water, it can contain only so much water. After that, then the water begins to run out, out your hands off the rag and they put the rag back in the water again, yet the rag still cannot obtain any more water because it's saturated. I pray the saturations of God's blessings on our lives and on your life this year as we go through the rest of this season that he saturate us with even the greatness of his power. In this wilderness, this woman experienced it after she had been pushed away, he brings her back to a door of hope and gives her, her financially, emotionally, spiritually, and new relationships and plentifulness in her lives for she remembered the days of Egypt, of bondage, but God brought her out and bringing you and I out also to a wealthy place. It's a review of that second chapter of Hosea, and particularly verse 15, how God made things to grow, fresh vineyards, fruitful days. How many of you really want to see fresh vineyards and fruitful days? I know I do. Wilderness days are behind us. Good days, the best days are in front of us. Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Renew your strength, renew your vision, and renew your hope. 
Tonight, I want to move into this book of Hosea a little bit further in that second chapter where you're at. And I'm going to talk about the Lord of love. We see him wooing her into the wilderness and bringing her back to him. Now he begins to express himself as the Lord of love, the Lord of love. Um, Hosea 2 and verse 16, and it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that I will call, that you will call me husband. You will no longer call me master. That's in, I think, the NIV translation. Um, he says, I don't want you, uh, a new, uh, the New King James translation, I don't want you to call me, uh, you will no longer call me, uh, you will call me, I'm sorry, husband. You will no longer call me master. He now shows his love towards, uh, towards us that he wants to become our husband. I'm going to get into some, some weighty things tonight in that word husband versus master, but it'll all come together in the end. As we are experiencing God and going into new things and new levels with him, he has shown us his wonders even in the wilderness. And now he wants to make us his bride, a typify, typical of typifying the church, and he wants us to be fruitful. Genesis 1:27 speaks about fruitfulness, and that's bringing forth and growing and increasing. He wants us to bring forth, to grow and increase in whatever we have our hands to do. He wants us to grow and increase. He gives us here now this, this great hope. He adorns us in this place, in this wilderness, and he helps her to experience the days of her youth. The joyful and rejoicing time is coming back again. She's alive again. She's feeling the joy. She's feeling the blessings of the Lord. She's feeling stronger in this new relationship coming into this betrothed to her husband, the Lord of love. He will not abandon forever. Although Israel had played the harlot, they had gone astray in adultery. We are like sheep, all go astray. But God woos us back and opens our hearts up to come back to him. I'm so glad he doesn't give up on us as man do, do but he brings us back to him. He is the Lord of love. He talks about this, this newness in relationship that, he got, that he's going to have with us. This new relationship is resuming and announcing and pronouncing. He is now giving us this assurance of his mercy and his love. His love that he gives and what he brings back and establishes with us is that he loves us and he cares for us. And he wants us to know that he, we will never be absent of him because it's a new relationship that we are garnering, are building with him. He gives us this relationship, which is a stoge, stoge, stoge is a loving relationship as a family, as sisters and brothers, as children. We are in family relationship with the Lord. This love, the Lord of love, is the agape love. And storge, which is family and sister and brotherly love, flows out of agape love, God love. This love, he wants us to know not only does he love us, but he also loves everything that's connected to us. You wouldn't want to be married to someone and they only love you, and they do not care about the other things that you are concerned about, your children, your immediate family, those that are blended into your family, but God is telling us, if he loves you, he loves your whole family. Isn't that a blessing to know that he doesn't leave anybody in your house out? He loves everyone that you are concerned about. He says, do not, it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that I'm going to call you my, uh, call me husband. You no, no longer call me master. Call me Ishai, husband. Experience the affection that I have for you and love and relationship as a husband. Not lie, not as a master, an owner, or possessor. You don't want to be with anyone. You got to control or try to predominate and possess or, 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 or pressure on them to love you. It should be a reciprocal relationship. God is a wonderful father, but he's an awesome husband, and he knows how to deal and deal with us and take time with us as a husband would and should do with his natural wife. 
in some deeper relationship, it's sweeter to call him um, my Lord and my wife versus to call him my ser servant and my master. The deeper relationship goes into him being our husband. He's our husband. He's our husband. He, we are married to Christ. We are the bride and he is the groom. He's our husband. What marvelous grace that we see in these scriptures that God is pleading with us, pleading with Israel, and acting now as a husband to bring us back to him and playing the part of a husband. I hear something telling me a good man is hard to find, yes, but even more challenging is to find a good woman. Together, it's a good relationship, but if it's broken one or the other, it's gonna be a strained relationship all along the way. What are you saying, Pastor? One wants to be married and the other is still thinking about it. But when you unite together in unity, in harmony, it's a beautiful relationship. The husband involves a promise that he presents. This promise that he presents is that he's going to be responsible and supplying every need. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. It's in the book of Ephesians. But Christ here in the book of, of Hosea is setting the example that I want to be responsible and I want to be a supplier. Supplying, and not only supplying, but providing. Loving and caring, protecting, understanding, and bringing in a closer relationship. He is our husband the Lord of love. Call me husband, trust me. Trust me to love in my love, my loving faithfulness. Although human men disappoint and make mistakes. Here is one right here. We make mistakes, we don't get it right all the time. But God is not like a man. He is faithful. He never makes a mistake, he never disappoints. Second Corinthians 13 and eight says, God's love never fails. Any relationship should measure by 1 Corinthians 13, the yardstick of love, and see the length that love go through, goes to, bearing all, believing all, all hoping all, bearing, uh, understanding all, love never failing. But love must be tested and tried. I don't know about you, but I'm glad God stays faithful even when we're foolish. He is the Lord of love. This new relationship and this new commitment and this new hope and this new joy, this new peace is for whosoever wants to come and be connected with this great loving husband, this great loving father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of love. Many have felt like I've been abused and I've gone through uh, uh, vulnerable places. I lent myself to people that were I was, I was ex exposed to and I thought they loved me, but they did me damage. So I'm afraid of anyone. I don't want to be around anyone, any people at all. But God is not like man. God's love is not disappoint. It does not wound. If he, if he brings correction, he also brings healing. He doesn't leave you broken and wounded forever. He knows how to pour oil in the places where you're wounded. And do not give up on the Lord of love. The Bible says that he, his love, again, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 8, his love never fails. He is the God of restoration. Matthew 11, around verse 28 and 29, he says, come unto me and I will give you rest and you shall find rest for your soul. The Lord is looking for you that have been uh, estranged again by life. You have been wounded by people. You've even dealt with church hurt, but God is saying that he did not meant that, mean that for your destruction. He meant it all for good. He saw it was going, what was going on. He knew you were being wrong, wrongfully done, but his love never fails and he knows how to heal mend and bring you back to him. Look what the Bible says in this, this Lord of love in John 14 and one. I paraphrase, he says, as I go to the text, he says, it's so sweet here to see the assurance of his love when you're weary, trembling in your heart. Pastor House, can I trust again? Can I believe again? Can I open my heart up to love again? Yes, but filter it through the love of God 
Do not leave yourself vulnerable to humanity. Open yourself up to God's love, he says in St. John 14. And one, Jesus says, um, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe in him. Trust his love. St. John 3, 16, if you know it, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, everlasting love. I'm talking tonight about the Lord of love. I will show you wonders, he says in the 15th verse of Hosea 2, in the wilderness. The wonders, I'm paraphrasing that he's showing in the wilderness, is vineyards are growing again. Dry, desolate, barren places are getting ready to shoot forth and break out into something great. Something beautiful is coming out of the pain. He says, you're going to be singing in the wilderness like the barren woman over in the book of Isaiah. You're going to be enlarging the borders of your tents because God is getting ready to do something wonderful out of a barren and a dry place. That good things, those good things, good things are coming out. We're walking through wilderness, but good things are coming out of this. New relationships are coming out of this. I'm growing in my love and I'm growing in the grace of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please remember, the Lord loves you. Trust him to be your husband and your, not your, just your master. He becomes our Lord because we submit to him. He becomes our husband because we connect to him. Like the vine of John 15 and the branch, we abide in him. He doesn't want to be lording over us as a dominant master. He wants to be a loving and faithful husband. I want to assure you tonight that God loves you and he cares for you. He wants you to be in covenant relationship with him. He wants to bless you with heaven's best for your life. He wants to care for you, strengthen you, and build you. Let your love for him be renewed. The book of Revelation says that we must return back to our first love. Come back to loving him. And love is an action from our hearts that where our treasures are, there will be our heart also. He loves us, he forgives us, he corrects us in love, and his love never fails. Trust the Lord tonight, he is the Lord of love. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. I pray that we come into covenant with you in this wonderful relationship as Hosea and Gomar is a reflection of how things can turn around in a wilderness place, and you can show us that you still love us, to remove from us, but not forever, and to bring us back into covenant with you. Let my heart be open to you, Lord. Let my spirit be open to you, to know that you love me and you care for me, can make me strong and make me better. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, please lock in on this short lesson. Meditate on that scripture of Hosea 2 and 16 and see how the Lord really loves you, that he'll chase after you. He's the God of every circumstance and he's coming to you. God loves you, we love you, God bless you. See you real soon.